they had to deal with? Absolutely. So would your mother be a donkey? Radio shows and podcasts can be a massive stepping stone for artists and upcoming talent. On the other hand, they can be the deciding factor that destroys someone's career when the interview goes terribly wrong. In the world of hip-hop, there's one platform that stands above the rest, The Breakfast Club. The show is constantly hosting big-name stars and is led by the one and only Charlemagne the God. Unfortunately for some of the guests on the show, Charlemagne has a bad reputation for trying to embarrass them or even put them in controversial conversations aiming to damage their image and ultimately leaving them feel worse for being a part of the show. But every so often, there's a guest that shows up and flips the script on the god. Today, we're gonna take a look at seven guests from The Breakfast Club that completely destroy Charlemagne in the interview. Buckle up, cause this one's gonna be a bumpy ride. Beanie Siegel we're gonna start the list with the heater of an altercation. Beanie Siegel, whose real name is Dwight Grant, is an American rapper and actor. He was born on March 6, 1974 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Beanie Siegel gained prominence in the late 1990s and early 2000s as a member of Rockefeller Records. Siegel is known for being a streetwise cat you don't want to mess with, and he certainly made this abundantly clear to Charlemagne the God during a particular encounter. Charlemagne broke the ice by asking Beanie Siegel about a rumor that was circulating the hip-hop scene at the time. People were claiming that Beanie Siegel only got to where he was because of Kanye West, and Charlemagne decided to push for answers. Prior to the interview, Ye was at a dinner party in Philly eating with some friends and a couple of thugs pulled chairs up to the table. They told Kanye to hand over his chain. When he didn't give it up, they just sat at the table and waited for him to leave. Kanye hit up Beanie, who showed up and let the men know that nothing was going to put his neck on the line for Ye's. Unfortunately, loyalty to his friend became distorted, leading to unfounded rumors of ingratitude towards Kanye. When Charlemagne asked about the issue and then continued to talk over him, you could tell quickly where the interview was going. I know you I'm not qualified to speak on it. I'm, You're just not. A, I'm just observing it, but it just seemed like, you know, loyalty was. Frustrated by the host's incessant interruptions and apparent lack of understanding of the complexities of street culture, Beanie Siegel raised his voice in a passionate plea for recognition of his lived experiences and insights. He sternly warned Charlemagne against speaking on matters he had limited knowledge of, particularly when it came to navigating the intricate web of street dynamics. You like so don't talk out in that because you know why because you not from that cloth well that's cool i don't get you that. not that's why you don't understand that kanye not a street nigga i know that well i know i'm not qualified to speak on this but you can understand how some people don't think what you're doing is all the way solid you might not think that because but and you're not qualified dog just like with Fredril Starr, which we will get to later, Charlemagne was left speechless. Beanie Siegel emphasized the need to honor people's background and knowledge before driving into touchy subjects. It was a powerful moment, spotlighting the clash between mainstream media views and genuine street stories. But not everyone is as blunt and scary as Beanie Siegel. The next guest on the show to deflect Charlemagne's antagonizing softer approach, and the repercussions reached a new level. Boast Malone. Post Malone, born Austin Richard Post, is an American rapper, singer, and songwriter, known for his unique blend of hip-hop, rock, and pop music. When Post was still getting his feet into the entertainment industry, he was invited to The Breakfast Club. The interview was an amazing opportunity for the 20-year-old Malone to get his name out there. But for Charlemagne, it was an opportunity for him to try and discredit the young buck, and that was where things backfired for him. The interview started off great since Charlemagne and Malone were supporters of the Dallas Cowboys. But when the artist announced that his father also worked as a concession officer for the Cowboys, Charlemagne started laying into the rapper. First, he started off by laughing at the job title, which made Post Malone feel like he had to defend his father's job. To ease the tension, Malone asked Charlemagne to go to a game and offered him free tickets to the sweet box, which was enough to quiet the radio host down for a bit. When Charlemagne saw that he couldn't get Malone frazzled through his father, he decided to take a different approach. Host had cornrows at the top, what? And Charlemagne was quick to bring up the conversation of what a culture vulture is. Malone wasn't trying to mock or claim the culture by his hairstyle, and simply replied he likes what he likes. He also tried to make Post Malone say the n-word which the artist refused and said that Charlemagne was trying to get him in trouble. When these antics didn't work, Charlemagne started to attack Malone's girlfriend, who was also in the studio. 
by implying that the artist would cheat on her because of the fame. Whenever you bring your girl and put her in the public eye, it's about five guys. She may have only slept with five guys in her life. All those five guys gonna post it on YouTube and be like, I had that. Post Malone made it clear that he wasn't the average man, so he wouldn't ruin their relationship for temporary fun. After the interview, the fans were in a frenzy, and it soon became a popular topic. Many people began to lean towards Post because of how he handled the situation, which just made Charlemagne seem like a troll. Larry Elder Not all guests on the show come from the world of hip-hop. Larry Elder was a presidential candidate when he accepted an invitation to share his plan for America on The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne assumed he was talking to a random person and really tried to get the best of him. When Larry Elder shared his plan to amplify the voices of black people and help improve the community, Charlemagne started riddling him with questions and really tried to make him look stupid. He also had his co-host and another guest teaming up with him. So this quickly became a three versus one debate. Larry Elder had a response for everything, which just fuel Charlemagne to keep badgering him. Charlemagne then brought up a conversation about systemic racism, and Larry was quick to tell him that he didn't believe it still existed. This was the icing on the cake, with wits and tension at high level. You could see they were not going to stump Larry. Charlemagne was in over his head and had to resort to his computer and pre-written questions and answers his team supplied him. You think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> Define fascism. Oh, it's all Define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. The back and forth goes on and on, and actually becomes comical at how bad the Breakfast Club team handled this one. Charlemagne proved to the world that he didn't have a versatile knowledge on politics and world topics, and revealed the limitations of their approach by showcasing elders' depth of knowledge on critical issues. Master P. To go when Master P and Mercedes started releasing songs. Master P appeared on The Breakfast Club to promote their music, but Charlemagne began to show his controversial antics. He made a comment about Mercedes' appearance on the cover of the album Rear End, which had her bent over the hood of a classic car. Charlemagne said that everyone was releasing music around that time except Mercedes, but also threw in a quick, she has a fat ass though, which was a terrible comment to make because he was sexualizing her live on air. Master P had to put him in his place and so Charlemagne that he wouldn't disrespect his girl like that. Charlemagne had no right to talk about her body in that manner, especially on a live broadcast. As always, Charlemagne was dumbfounded after being called out like that, and he remained humble for the rest of the show. Charlemagne's comment not only was inappropriate, it also highlighted a larger issue in the hip-hop industry, the demeaning of women and objectifying them. She had a fat ass. Yeah, yeah see that, bro, hold what? up, man. Don't, don't, don't talk about Mercedes. Oh, like I that. Now, let's go back to this, dog. Okay. Wait, wait, let's, let's, let's respect, because I'm not going to talk about your sister, your mom, or nothing. Got you. You know, we need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first thing, because I, I know you do your radio thing, and I respect that, but at the same time, Mercedes is a she a female. She oh my fault. Yeah, you, you you're right. But she did look good on that cover though. Yeah, she looked good. That's yeah. that's your opinion. But you know Matt Master P was right to call out the radio host, as this will empower more to step up and create respect in the culture. Fredro Star. Dralamane isn't making sexist jokes or trying to racially attack his guests. He also talks about the sexual escapades revolving his guests, and not all of them come back at Charlemagne in a calm manner. Don't play me like that, nigga. I don't know what you want me to do. What you want me to do? Fredro Starr, whose real name is Fred Lee Scruggs Jr., is an American rapper and actor best known for his role as a member of the hardcore hip-hop group Onyx. During an interview with the rapper, Charlemagne brought up the topic of Fredro hooking up with Brandy, which set him off. Fredro then retaliated by reminding Charlemagne of how he was punched in the back of the head by 50 Cent. The back and forth continued and things got heated. Fast, without any warning, Fredro Starr began to violently press Charlemagne, calling him a pussy. Saying, do your Googles, nigga. Fredro quickly let Charlemagne know he didn't want any smoke. Instantly, Charlemagne went quiet, and it was obvious that he was scared of what could come next. As the other host of the show tried to move past the altercation, you could tell the inexperience of Charlemagne's comments.